hey, are you trying to figure out the paperwork on the lease option side of the deals? Okay, I understand. It can seem daunting at first. I have put this video together and corrected all the information that, that may have been wrong that was put out before. And here it is, plain and simple. As watch as I go through all of the documents that we provide to you in the wholesaling lease options training modules, I'll go through each document and show you exactly what they are and what you're supposed to do with them and how to fill them out. All right, let's jump right in. But I'm going to go to realestatewholesalersclub.com which is the club's website here. And you can see this, is what it looks like when you load up. Now it's changed quite a bit in the last year. I mean, I've, I've really tried to evolve a little bit. So it's, it's caused us to have to change the website, but you can see uh, right here, just underneath the video at the top, it says free training courses. Okay. There's also YouTube there. If you want to find us, if you want to find us on Facebook, you can find us there. All right. Hey, hey, thanks, Clint and uh, and Ryan, everybody, for letting me know that uh, the mic is okay. All right. Yeah, so if you want to find us on Facebook or YouTube, just click one of these links. But if you're interested in doing a virtual co-host sale, okay, this is mobile wholesaling. You can go there, click here. This is how to host sell bank-owned properties or REOs. And then we have, uh, do you want to wholesale lease options. So you can click here if you want to do wholesaling lease options. Now, uh, in each one of uh, there is training agreements. Those are agreements that you can use in your business. Uh, you'll need to modify them, of course, and you'll need to do your own due diligence and all the legal mumbo jumbo that I should be saying here about not being an attorney and all this and great and whatever stuff. Okay. So I'm not an attorney, you guys know that, but uh, these are uh, just kind of boilerplate agreements. You're gonna wanna get in there and, and make them fit you. Okay, now the question I have in my mind and the first person to put it in the chat gets to win. Which, which set of agreements do you guys wanna see me go through first? Pick, a, pick, a, pick an evolution, the virtual co-wholesale, the REO or the wholesaling lease options. Which agreement packs would you guys like to see? Uh, somebody did put it in the chat, but I can't see it because I'm sharing my screen. What is it? Oh, there it is. Lease. All right. All right. We got it. All right. We're going to go over here to wholesale lease options. We're going to click the button. And you can see it takes me directly to, there is no bullshit here. We do not even ask for your email address, guys. All right, you can see I'm a flip addict. I've got this big flip stogie right here for the advanced level. All right, four weeks to your first virtual wholesale lease option deal training. This is the modules, here's video one. Uh, you can see me uh, right there on every video. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. You know what's funny about doing a lot of content on, uh, hey, Ryan, we'll catch you later, man. Thanks, dude. Uh, you know, it's funny when you make a lot of content on YouTube, you end up getting tired of looking at your own damn face. You're like, oh my God, it's another freaking picture of me on some video. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like that. I've seen, a th I've seen it a thousand times. All right, underneath the videos, there is the big blue buttons. And under the blue buttons, it's materials that are relevant to the topic of wholesaling lease options. And so in step one here, I'm gonna click the blue button. You can see it opens up a Google Drive folder which is where these items are stored, okay? Once you, uh, once you go there, you'll notice there are several documents here. Now, guys, I get this problem from people pretty often, and that is they try to go in here and click on, like I'll click on the first one, for example, which is seller call notes. They try to click on this and then edit it here in the folder. You can't edit my document, guys. <laughs> You'll be changing it for everybody in the entire world. All right. So I need you to download 
won't let you do that, by the way, but uh, it'll, it'll, it'll confuse you for a minute. So what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll, you'll download these to your computer and then you can change them to be whatever you want them to be. You can edit them from your computer. Okay. I hope that makes a lot of sense. All right. So the first one was seller call notes. That's for, that's an aid to help you make calls. The second one is uh, the offer packet for making offers on lease purchase homes. And you can see there's only about seven different sizes of fonts and different types and certain stuff is black and, uh, I mean, boldened and other stuff isn't, and there's no pictures and it doesn't have your name or phone number on it. You have to download this and edit it, okay? You put your phone number and your name, okay? See, it says your name and picture and logo here, add contact info here. All right. Uh, make it yours. Clean it up. Okay. All right. Clean it up and make it yours. And why did I put up such a crappy looking document? Oh, well, you could have just edited a document, made it real nice and gave it to us. Well, I totally could have, but then I run the risk of people going in there and using it just verbatim exactly what it is every time. And everybody across the country is using the same exact thing. So I made it so hideous that you need to go in there and edit it and clean it up and make it look like you. Don't make it look like me, look like you. Okay, the next one in this folder is the pre-qualify lead interview sheet. Okay, this is if you are on the phone calling homeowners and this is also a help for making that call so that you can, you know, when you're looking for deals so that you can keep notes, take notes here, all right, of your call and you won't lose information as it comes over the phone phone line. All right. Now the next one, the seller lease option agreement memo. Again, you'll need to edit this, download it and edit this. This is the document we use to close sellers, homeowners on the front side, the very beginning agreement that we use when we are closing them, getting permission to do a wholesale lease option deal. All right, now look at the top. It says important disclosure. This is as is, blah, blah. While the information contained herein, blah, blah. I'm not an attorney, okay? All right, do your own due diligence, but this is pretty standard boilerplate stuff. All right, um, delete this important disclosure before sending it to a homeowner. <laughs> All right. That's my message from me to you. Now take the lease option agreement, put it back down here on the second page. I do not know why Google shifts my things around and reformats them when I put them on drive, but it's nuts. And that is why you see these documents look like crap, but that works out good because you need to edit them anyway. It's just more incentive to now. Thank you, Google. Okay, on the second page here, drop lease option agreement memo, and you can see I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna move in here a little bit. All right. Now maybe everybody can see that a little bit better. I hope. I hope so. Okay. So it says here. Mo and it's between the property owner and you. Okay, you're gonna want to delete this line as well. All right, property owner and you. That's just information for you to help you know who fills this agreement out. Okay. Now you see it says seller blank. This is where the seller's name. All right. We'll allow buyer blank. This is where the buyer's name, your name, will go or your company name to lease option, the property at, and this is where the property address goes. Okay, pretty simple, right? It's pretty pretty obvious. <clears throat> sorry to be, sorry to be talking so, <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm teaching a kindergarten class or something. Okay, purchase price to be. This is the purchase price, guys. All right, when you're talking to the homeowner and you get the purchase price, Put it right here on this line. The next line, term of lease option to be, that's 24 to 36 months. Typically, whatever the term was that you said or you pitched or you agreed to or he said was cool, okay, put that there. 
the monthly lease payment to be, now this is what the monthly rent will be. Whatever you guys agree to with the homeowner, use that number right here. The term of the lease option to begin as soon as the buyer acquires a lease option tenant for the property the day that tenant buyer moves in. Okay, you see how this agreement is non-binding for you until the day that tenant buyer moves in, which is also the day that this agreement was assigned over to that tenant buyer in a wholesale lease option, which means you were really on the hook for all of about five seconds. All right. That line's gold right there. It's beautiful, man. It I, is. Th thanks for sharing that and saying that. I, I totally agree with you. And it's, it's about as honest and, and as you can possibly get. All right, the next, the next line says, this lease option agreement will be assigned by a buyer to a new lease option tenant. All right, so if you didn't understand, Mr. Seller, in the previous line, let me say it even more clearly yet again for you. We are not going to live here. <laughs> we are going to put someone in this property, all right? Now, that, now, the next line, seller has the right to approve or reject new lease option tenant, okay? Now, this allows your you to say to the the homeowner hey listen um i've got uh i've got the fine i'm gonna i'm gonna find the guy or gal and then you know you're, you're gonna have the ability to you know give them a look over and make sure they're okay with you too okay that we're not gonna we're not gonna sucker anybody here you know i'm not gonna move charles manson into your house okay without you knowing seller may use the buyer's lease Okay, seller may cancel this agreement memo at any time before tenant buyer occupies property, all right? If you don't like that line, you wanna take it out, fine, do it. All right, but this, this, is an, this is a get out of jail free card for the seller. This will help you get deals easier, okay? And what's the chances that they're gonna do the deal before you? Not likely, because they've already not done the deal already for, for some time, most likely. All right, the next line, buyer's intention is to find a lease option tenant and assign this lease option agreement memo to that. Oh, here we go. We're, how about if I just tell you one more time, Mr. Homeowner? This is exactly what my plan is. This is the third time in five sentences that I'm saying it. Buyer's intention is to find a lease option tenant and assign this lease option agreement memo to that lease option tenant for a fee. Oh yeah, now I'm telling you I'm gonna get paid. Lease option tenant will then pay seller the monthly lease amount until they exercise their option or until the end of the option term. Yep, pretty plain and simple. Seller agrees to allow buyer to put a sign in the yard. Guys, this is pretty big. If your seller is not willing to cooperate with you on the marketing aspect of this deal, walk away. That's my advice. If they are not cooperative with the marketing agreement in, in the sense that they're allowing you to put a sign in the yard, advertise the property. Uh, if, if they're uh, if they're not willing to do that, they're not too motivated, and you're going to have a difficult time selling a property you can't put out there to the world in the proper way, through the means and channels that it needs to be done. Okay, perhaps the homeowner is is uneducated in those methods, and they don't know how to do it. Maybe maybe you're learning how to do it. But if something's going to happen to this property and it's going to be sold or rented to sell, okay, you're going to have to do some marketing. So if they're uncooperative, you know, it's, you got to ask yourself, hey, do I want to fight the battle? Probably not. Now, important disclosure, buyer is the principal in this transaction and is not a licensed real estate agent. Okay, I'm not. If you are obviously you'll need to change this a little bit. Okay. So you won't need to, uh, to be lying to people, <laughs> change it up, edit it. And then you can see there's a place down here for the seller, their printed name and uh, signature. And then uh, what? And then there's a place for your signature as the buyer. All right. So that's that agreement there. That's what that is. Uh, you can see it's not too horrible bad. It's uh, basically a boilerplate type agreement. Um, all right. So what I want to do is I want to go back out here to uh, Real Estate Wholesalers Club. 
uh, the, the modules that we were at were, uh, we just completed going through step one materials. All right, I'm gonna go through step two materials and it shouldn't take very long because it's the same exact memo that we just looked at. <laughs> okay. Same exact memo we just looked at. We, we just went through it. I have it in there twice, so it'll help people find it. All right. And uh, now step three materials. This is the final closing packet materials. There's several things in here that are good tools for you, good aids for you. Uh, and then there's also a screening attendant buyer. All right. And I'm going to go through both of these. I'm not going to belabor it. I'm not going to read every sentence because these documents are rather lengthy. But uh, I'm going to explain them, go through and show you what they are. Now, I'm going to start here with screening a tenant buyer. This is just an, an, an. And what it does is it reminds you of the conversation so that when a tenant buyer calls on one of your property deals or he texts most likely, OK, most likely a text when they text, they're going to. Uh, want to know, you know, right away, hey, is this available? Um, you know, see the property tomorrow. Whoa, 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 slow your roll, okay? First off, make sure they are wanting to rent to own or lease purchase, not just rent, okay? Now, next, find out if they've got two years of good rental history, then find out if they have jobs that produce income sufficient to support the payment, right? Which is they need to be making three times in household income what the payment is, guys. If your tenant buyer is making five grand a month and they're trying to rent a $2,500 a month house, do not do it. Do not. Okay. Now, if they're wanting to try to rent a a $2,500 house and they got $7,500 a month coming in. Okay. That might be a different story. All right. Uh, then make sure they've got down payment in hand, right? How do they have the down payment? Where is it at? Do they, is it real money or is it something they're expecting to receive? All right. Where, where is it? <laughs> Show me the money. You guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then make sure they're willing to do a tenant screening. Let them know, hey, if you've lied to me about all this stuff, it's not going to matter because I'm going to do a tenant screen on you. You're going to have to, you know, submit one of those and we'll, we'll check up on you and make sure everything's kosher and, and all that. Uh, you know, credit and all that, you know, we're, like I said, we're a program that's flexible, uh, but we're, uh, we're not willing to do, you know, we're not willing to, basically we're not willing to bend over, and, you know get rammed so that's what's up tenant you know tenant buyer uh qualification uh helper aid tool verify the above and then execute the tenant screen and i recommend smartmove.com all right so anyway i hope that will be a help for you while you're searching for your tenant buyers now um the next one in this Google Drive folder, and remember, you'll need to download this and then add it and then edit it on your computer, okay? You'll want to download it to your computer and then edit it on your editing software, Word or whatever you're using. Okay, so I'm going to click the lease option packet. Now, you can see here, I'm going to zoom in again. And you can see the important disclaimer is there yet again, okay? Want to delete this important disclaimer. It's just me letting you know I'm not really um, an attorney here. I'm just, these are just example documents. Now, I do use them, <laughs> okay? But I'm not guaranteeing that you can use them. I'm just saying that I do, all right? <coughs> excuse me all right so you can see you'll want to delete the important disclaimer now there's a little bit of a table of contents here <coughs> excuse me it says right here at the top important documents needed for a lease option deal are now this is a lesson all in itself there's five documents here all in this packet 
<clears throat> why didn't I why didn't I break them up and put them down in 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 the Google Drive folder individually? Well, because you need to go through these documents and many of them you're going to do and 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 have filled out and signed all at the same time. Okay, so you're not going <laughs> to I don't I didn't want to leave you a whole bunch of multiple choice documents to try to find the right ones. This is what I call the lease options closing packet. All right. This is how you close your tenant buyer and your seller together, all right? Number one, it, there is a lease option agreement memo. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar? Yep, it should. That's the same memo that you already have filled out with the homeowner. We just went through it, okay? Uh, that's in this packet, but it's, it's uh, only because you could use, you could basically just print off this packet right here and have all the documents you need to do the entire deal. Okay. But if you've grabbed the lease option agreement memo from the preceding modules, then you won't need it here again. Okay. You'll already have it filled out there. All right. Um, number two, a tenant buyer application. Number three, the lease agreement. Okay. There is a, lease agreement. How simple is that guys? It's, it's not like, um, I have this special important document that was drafted by attorneys in Washington, DC. And it's so special and elite that, you know, no, it's, it's a freaking rental agreement. Like how many of us have ever filled out one of these? All of us, all of us probably have rented something before? I mean, where have you been living? Right? <laughs> Either you own it or you rented it or you're something. I mean, or maybe you live with your mom and dad and you're in the basement. I don't know. But, you know, it's just a lease agreement. Okay. Now, here's the beauty of it. Because it's just a lease agreement, you could take this lease agreement out and throw it away. You don't have to use this one. If there's one that's better for your area, just take that lease agreement and use it in the place of this one. And then you have a more customized packet for yourself. Okay. So that's what I recommend. It's just a lease agreement. So we're not going to go heavily into what a lease agreement is and how it's, you know, put together and the wordings and so on and so forth. It's just a lease agreement. You can go online anywhere on Google and just type it in lease agreement and you can find it. They're out there for free. Okay. So, <laughs> But you could, you could probably do yourself one better and call a, a property management company in your town, or maybe you could call a, uh, a title company and say, hey, is there a, a kind of a standard lease agreement for the area here? And would you be willing to share it with me, email it to me? And they will usually for nothing, for free. All right, document number four in this packet is the option to purchase agreement. Okay, this is the option part of the lease option. Okay, the lease is just a lease, but then there's also an option to purchase agreement. Now, here's the best part. The option to purchase agreement is just an option to purchase agreement. It's real simple. It's a one pager. The option to purchase agreement is one of the most simple, simple, simple agreements in real estate. It's simple. It's a permission slip. Okay, so you can find tons of examples of option to purchase agreements. Some try to look all wordy and professional and legal, and some are written on a damn napkin and they all work. Okay. Uh, let me interject that. That's the beauty of real estate agreements, guys. Real estate agreements are about the most easy to work with of all the, all the world in all the world, I guess, of all the other agreements, I, I would guess as an ignorant outsider of the bar association, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm just an ignorant outsider, but they are so easy to work with. And the reason why is because everything, everything, everything in real estate is negotiable. Everything, you name it, it's negotiable. 
So these documents have to be so flexible that they can be modified, 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 modified. All right. And they are. And that's why most real estate documents are so desperately simple because they're meant to be modified by you because everything is negotiable and you may be changing or needing to change this document in a number of ways. Please feel free. Okay. <laughs> change the documents, modify them, make them yours. Okay. There's a lease agreement and then there's an option to purchase agreement. Very, very simple. Then there's an assignment agreement. Okay. I also call this an addendum. All right. Now let's go through these. Here's a tenant application. You've seen something like this. Chances are you've already filled something out like this before in your life. So here you have your name. You're going to get the social security number. You're going to get the uh, address, you're going to get the phone, you're going to get the previous addresses for the last two years, you're going to get gross annual income, you're going to get monthly obligations, not including rent, what are they paying in expenses, you're going to have them sign it off, okay, then you're going to edit this document, you're going to drop the lease option agreement memo off the bottom of that page. Again, thank you, Google, I don't know why you do that to me, but you do. All right, now that document there is the lease option agreement memo. We've already, we've already filled that out in the other module, but it's here just in case you wanted to grab a full packet and have every document you need. All right, now this is the first right of refusal. This is the option to purchase agreement. All right, it's titled first right of purchase. It is an exclusive right to purchase this property for a set term of time. All right, it's easy to fill out. This is actually between the property owner and you, all right? The initial flex option agreement memo is really just a permission slip to get you going. This is more of a solid option agreement and you are going to assign this over later in the addendum to your tenant buyer. Okay, now you'll fill this out by putting the owner's name here at the top of course, and then they are also known as the grantor, okay? And they are granting your company or you here and after called the grantee a first right of purchase as follows, all right? The property address, the term. Now, what term do you put? Well, is it 24 to 36 or is it 36 or is it 18 or is it 12? You'll wanna put that in the blank right here at the ending sentence, at the last of the, the last sentence of paragraph two here where I put the blue box. Okay, the price, this is the tiers. Okay, if you are into doing tiers, I'm not big into doing tiers, all right? But if you wanna have a tier of, you know, for the purchase price, this is where you put it in at, okay? You'll put it right here in this section. You can see the first 12 months and then 13 through 24 and then 25 through, 36 or what have you. Okay. Consideration in exchange for this right, the grantee has paid grantor blank. Okay. Now what you're going to do here is typically, all right, 10 bucks. All right. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, now this is going to give you the right to purchase, which you're going to later assign over to your tenant buyer. Okay. And this is basically a down payment, which you're going to put there. Now, number five, which is 10 bucks, all right? At time of exercise of first right, blah, blah, a lot of legal mumbo jumbo, okay, taxes, a warning about taxes, the seller's right to mortgage real estate, okay, uh, it's gonna talk about all this stuff. You can take a look at everything and read it through. It's a lot of legal, legal stuff. It's not real interesting, but it needs to be there. Now look at number nine, rights of assignment. This agreement may not be assigned by grantee without written permission by grantor, okay? Now, we are going to get the written permission, okay, by the grantor. We are going to get the seller's written permission when we assign this document over, all right? Now, that's gonna make it even more solid. Now, you can see down here, there is a uh, right to cancel by the grantee, all right? <laughs> you, could, you could cancel this if you needed to. I don't know why that's in there, but it is. All right, now, tenant buyer and the owner name. You're going to sign that right there, and you are the tenant buyer. Okay. Statement of understanding. <laughs> uh, <coughs> it's funny. I use statement of understanding because it sounds better than cover your ass. <laughs> uh, statement of understanding. All right. 
Is anybody alive out there? Is anybody watching us? Is anybody paying attention or did I talk everybody's ass? Everybody's paying attention, good buddy. This uh, uh I appreciate it, man. It, I'm paying yeah. attention, but I'm in church, so hey, I appreciate you saying that. And and thank you, David Flanders, for uh chiming in here and complimenting me, man. Um, uh, and he's an attorney. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome, dude. Gosh, man, you never know who's watching, you know. Um, uh, okay. Hey, what's up, Aaron? Good to see you. Uh, all right. Hey, David said, yup, <laughs> that's cool. Hey, thanks for watching, brother. I appreciate it, man. I, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, lead anyone astray here. And, and it's a, it's a bit of a difficult walk if you're not a, an attorney. So, uh, yeah. Um, thank you for, for the compliments. All right. Statement of understanding. That's kind of a cover your ass. All right. And, and uh, the statement of understanding sounds better than cover your ass, but see, it says concerning the property located at property address blank. This is, this is for the tenant buyer. Okay. I, we, the tenant buyer name understand that I, we do not own the property and that it is owned by the homeowner. Okay. I, we understand that we, I are leasing the property from the owner and that I, if we, I default on the lease payment that subject to whatever interest the law may determine me or us to have at law, I, we will be evicted. <laughs> right? Right? We're going to get evicted. If we don't do what we said, we're going to get kicked out. Uh-huh. 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 Mm -hmm. That's what I tell them. I tell them like that in, in, in classic sling blade style too, before they move in. Mm -hmm. I reckon if you don't pay them, I reckon if you don't, mm -hmm, if, if that rent ain't in by the third, mm -hmm, um, I, I reckon you'll be moving out real shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is written black and white. So they're going to definitely be, <laughs> definitely be understanding it and putting their John Hancock on it. Now the next line, uh, I understand that in the unlikely event that a dispute occurs or a cause of action in law or equity arises out of the operation, construction, interpretation, or enforcement of this agreement between owner and or tenant, the losing party shall bear the cost of the attorney's fees and blah, blah. Okay, just standard boulder plate stuff. Hey, if you screw around on us and we end up having to evict you, you're going to not only pay for all that mess, but you're going to pay for our legal problems too. Okay. Um, Man, you just went over my head with that statement, David. I don't even know. We're going to have to get you on as a guest, man. We should have had you on today, man, uh, just to monitor us and add your, add your expertise. You know, you ought to maybe next week pop on because I'm going to have to do another set of contracts next week. And, uh, you, man, you'd be great to be on here. You ought to think about it. Let me know. Holler at me this week if you're interested in that, David. All right. Uh, it's the next line says, we understand that if attorneys find it necessary to resort to litigation in order to collect the attorney's fees and expenses owed pursuant to this agreement, the client shall be liable for reasonable attorney's fees. Problems, problems, problems. Just pay the bill, guys. Just pay the bill. And then they sign it. Okay. That's a cover your butt letter. All right. <laughs> yeah, man, I'd love to see you. Thank you, David. All right. Now drop the residency agreement back down on the next page where it belongs. All right. Now you can see the residency agreement. That is the lease agreement. Okay. It's the lease agreement. So they're going to fill out the lease agreement. Now I'm not going to go through a lease agreement because you guys already kind of know what a lease agreement is like, but look, monthly payment. Look, here is the tier system again, guys. If you're wanting to do the tier system, let me say it again. I don't like the tier system. Personally, I like my deals straight, even, simple, keep it simple, stupid kind of stuff. Okay. But if you like the tier system and there's nothing wrong with it, okay, then here's the tier system. You see it during the first 12 months, blank, then during the 13th through 24th and blank. And then from 25 through month, okay, blank. All right. Now, all payments are due on the first of each month. Checks are to be made payable to the owner's name in the amount of mailing address for the owner here. But I recommend nowadays to collect your money electronically like every other business. But I'll tell the owner that. But remember, this is the owner's responsibility. They're probably not even equipped for that. 
So they'll have to put their mailing address down. So the tenant buyer can mail them the payment each month. All right, the next deposit, there are no refundable monies or deposits. They are going to sign this again and agree to this. I'm not getting my money back. No, you're not. No, you're getting an option to purchase and instead of, okay. Now, occupant names, on and on, pets, joint responsibility, indemnity, security devices. Okay, on and on and on, and oh, repairs. Now, if, even if you use a rental agreement that's local to your area, your jurisdiction, uh, what have you, you're, you're still going to want to add a few of these things that make this one special. <clears throat> or you're going to want to modify it a little bit. You see, it says right here, repairs, owner pays how much? Now, this is also kind of how I'm going to go through it with the tenant buyer. <laughs> you notice repairs, uh, owner pays, how much is that, Mr. Tenant Buyer? What's it say right there? Uh, zero. Owner pays zero. That's right. Tenant buyer is taking property and as is condition is responsible for all repairs, including mowing the lawn fixing the roof, plumbing, electrical, structural, termite. You may have to modify this and make it $500 per incident, $250 per incident. Owner is responsible for everything, for everything beyond the first $250 per incident. Oh, I've done that uh, many times. Okay, so you might have to modify this little section here. Access to premises, standard boilerplate. Okay, vehicles. Standard boilerplate, right? We don't want vehicles on blocks up in the front yard. Okay, Jethro. <laughs> uh, default and right of reinstatement. Inspection, as is condition. Telephone. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, it says we always have to have a phone number for them. That's what that is. Insurance. Okay, repairs and maintenance and expenditures. Full responsibility of tenant buyer. Though no amount of such expenditures shall be refundable or credited to the tenant buyer. Oh, breach. Man, what a crazy word. Malicious possession. God, that sounds like a crazy metal band, doesn't it? I'm going to concert tonight. Who are you seeing, man? I'm seeing malicious possession. All right. Personal property. Possession. <laughs> We got lots of evil sounding shit going on in this document. All right. Right to sublease. Special provisions. Radons. I, I think this document is thought of everything. I mean, we've thought of everything from the toilet breaking to somebody getting possessed, evidently. Okay. On and on. All right. <laughs> it is a rental agreement. And you guys know, if you've ever gone to an apartment complex and filled out a rental agreement, it is just like this, man. It goes on for pages and pages and pages. And then you move in and you have no idea what all that crap was that you just signed, but you will get a copy. <laughs> all right. The tenant buyer and the signs down here and guess who else signs? Um, of course, the owner is going to sign. Right. This is the addendum to the first right of purchase. This is the assignment agreement. Okay, earlier you filled out the first right of purchase, which is the option to purchase agreement. That is, that is a solid agreement between you and the homeowner to option this property for a set term. Now here you are going to assign that over to your tenant buyer with the homeowner's permission, written permission. It says here under the title, property owner and your company and the tenant buyer will all participate in signing this addendum or assignment agreement. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's also a little bit of a cover your ass letter too. Uh, so anyway, this agreement is an addendum. This is how you get paid, by the way. This is, what, this is the sheet of paper that gets you paid. This agreement is an addendum to the first right of purchase between your company or you, and you put that in the blank. You're also known as the assignor buyer, okay? and the homeowner on the contract dated blank. Okay, so in other words, the first right of purchase agreement that you just filled out between you and the homeowner, you are going to put your name and the homeowner's name here, just like it is on that agreement, and you're going to put the date of that agreement right here. It was probably the same day. 
concerning the property located at, okay, and then put the address of the property here. Blank dollars is being paid to your company, okay? That's where you put your name or your company name. You're also known as the assignor buyer by a new buyer, okay? Now you put the name of your tenant buyer here as the assignee buyer as an assignment fee for this contract, okay? Assignor buyer, assignee buyer, and seller understand that these monies paid to assignor buyer also serve as an assignee buyer's consideration in this contract and will apply to the purchase price as stated in the first right of purchase in paragraph four. Okay, plain and simple. All three parties are on the same page, okay? And then it continues on to say, these monies are not refundable under any circumstance, okay? And then there's a place for you to sign it, the assignor buyer. There's a place for your assignee buyer, your tenant buyer to sign it. And then there's a place for the homeowner to sign it. Then there's a place for you to edit so that you can place instructions for how the monies should be paid. Okay, I hope that really helped. I hope you got something out of this. You feel more confident now about the contracts because really it's not that complicated. They're very simple. They're, they're very editable. Okay. They're very modifiable. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but I hope it is. You can change these, modify them, make them what you need them to be. Definitely make them yours, make them look like you, make them represent you and your business and do your due diligence again and, and, and make sure if there's a better lease agreement that you should be using or something like that, that you go ahead and throw that in. And it's not a hard thing to figure out. You can, like I said before, you can ask a title company or a property management company in your area, if, hey, is there a better lease agreement here that, that people use? Send it to me. And they, most likely they'll send it to you for free. You can't beat free. Okay. Hey, I love you guys. And if you need us, you know where to find us. We're over at the realestatewholesalersclub.com. Thanks. Bye-bye.